This is the story of Ewoks, the battle for Endor. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Let's begin now. It was morning on the forest moon of Endor where the Ewoks lived. Wicket, the little Ewok, was strolling through the woods with Sindel, a girl whose family's star cruiser had crashed there several months before. Sindel leave soon? I guess so. My father's almost finished fixing our ship. Pretty soon, we'll have to say goodbye. Goodbye? Not good. Before Sindel could reply, Wicket stopped and sniffed the air. Danger! He and Sindel ran to a hill overlooking the Ewok village. Sindel gasped. The village! It's being attacked! Below them, marauders seven feet tall strode among the frightened Ewoks, burning huts and taking prisoners. Wicket scrambled down the hill. Sindel followed, looking for her mother and brother. Then she saw them. Her mother lay injured next to a log. Beside her, Mace was firing at the marauders. But as Sindel hurried toward them, there was an explosion. The log and everything around it were destroyed. Stunned, Sindel ran into the forest to find her father. Daddy! Daddy! Sindel's father, Jeremy Tawani, was repairing the family star cruiser in a nearby meadow. Suddenly, marauders burst from the forest and surrounded him. Tarek, the marauder king, approached Jeremit with the evil witch Shoral beside him. I know you're the keeper of the power. Give it to me now. When Jeremit refused, the marauders tore apart the control panel and found a small metal unit pulsing with light. Just then, Sindel emerged from the forest. Sindel, go back! Dodging laser fire, Jeremy dashed toward his daughter. He was hit, then stumbled into the woods with Sindel. Watching them, Sharal rubbed a strange ring on her finger. In the blink of an eye, she changed into a raven and flew after them. Hidden among the trees, Sindel threw her arms around her injured father. Daddy, they killed Mommy and Mace. Jeremy winced with pain. Sindel, remember the story about the little bird who was blown from his nest during a rainstorm? Fly like the little bird and go to Wicket. He'll help you find your way home. But I want to stay with you, Daddy. I'll always be with you. Now go, please. As she ran away, the marauders fired. Jeremy slumped to the ground. The raven saw Sindel and flew toward her. A moment later, Sindel slammed into Shoral. <laughs> Let me go! <laughs> There's no escape for you, my little one. Now only you can tell us the secret of the power. Sindel was locked in a cage wagon with Wicket and his friends. Trying to escape, the Ewoks pulled up a floorboard, but couldn't fit through it. Sindel spoke up. Wicket and I are small. Let us try. They squeezed through and ran into the woods. Sindel pointed to a hillside cave. Let's hide there. As they climbed inside, two marauders saw them and fired, knocking loose a big rock. Boulders thundered down, burying the marauders and trapping Sindel and Wicket in the cave. The two friends searched for a way out. Look, Wicket, daylight! They ran to the opening and found themselves atop a sheer cliff. Wicket, seeing bones and animal hides nearby, began weaving them together to form a crude hang glider. As Wicket finished, Sindel gasped. Those rocks next to you, they're moving. Wicket, it's a dragon! Using a spear-like bone, Wicket tried to protect Sindel. But the dragon grabbed her in its claws and flew out of the cave. Following in his hang glider, Wicket swooped down next to the dragon. He leaned out, took hold of Sindel, and snatched her from the dragon's claws. Then he guided his craft to the safety of the woods. Sindel and Wicket spent the night in a hollow tree trunk. The next morning, 
a small furry creature named Teak awaiting them. <laughs> Sindel thought he might be able to help. Do you know where there's food? <laughs> Darting ahead, the creature led them to a small cottage. <laughs> Following the creature through the door, Sindel glanced around. I like this place. Let's stay for a while. <laughs> Just as they were settling in, the door burst open, and a man with a white beard stood glaring at their furry friend. Teak, I told you to keep strangers away from here. They'd better be gone by the time I count to ten. One, two. Sindel took Wicket's hand and they left the cottage. That evening, as the two friends huddled by a fire, the old man ran from the cottage and poured water on the flames. What are you trying to do? Burn down the forest? Sindel shivered. It's cold, and I was afraid. The man frowned at her. Any fool knows the proper place for a fire is in a fireplace. Come back inside. Noah, the old man, agreed to let them stay if they helped around the house. Soon, Sindel noticed something very strange. Every morning, Noah goes off and doesn't come back until sunset. Wicket, let's find out where he goes. Okay. They followed him to a huge metal object covered with vines. It was a star cruiser. As Sindel climbed the steps, Noah saw her. You should never have come here. No one knows about this. Grumbling, Noah took Sindel and Wicket back to the cottage, where he told them his story. It seems like a lifetime since Captain Selleck and I crashed here. Our power unit was broken. So, Silek went off to search for another one. He never returned. Now I'm stuck here, and I'll probably never get home. Sindel rested her head on his shoulder. I'm stuck too, Noah. Maybe someday we can go home together. After dinner that night, Noah showed Sindel a wooden flute he'd brought from home. She thought back to what he had told her that afternoon. Noah, is Captain Salek dead? I think so. He must be. My family's dead, too. They're gone forever. No, Sindel. They're still with you. Here. Noah tapped his heart. Remember what they said and did. They'll always live in your memories. Sindel awoke the next morning to the sound of a familiar voice singing. Mommy? Is that you? Following the voice into the forest, she saw a beautiful young woman in a white robe. Beside her stood a handsome white horse. Come to me, my little one. As Sindel approached, the white robe suddenly turned black, and the lovely smile became an evil grin. It was Sherelle the witch. Let me go! <laughs> Wicked, I told you there'd be no escape. Sharal took her to King Tarek's castle, where Tarek showed Sindel the power unit from her father's star cruiser. Now use your magic to bring the power to life. But I can't. It's just a part from a star cruiser. Take the power with you and make it work. If you don't, you and the Ewoks will be doomed. He pulled the ring off Sherelle's finger. And you, witch, will die with them. Throw them in the dungeon with the Ewoks. Meanwhile, Noah, Wicket, and Teak had followed Sindel's trail. Noah threw a rope over the castle wall. Okay, you two, up and over. I'm right behind you. Inside, they crept down to the dungeon where Teak stole the keys and freed their friends. Sindel gave Noah the glowing power unit. Noah's eyes opened wide. This is the part I need for my ship. From the throne room, Terak heard noises below. Guards, come with me to the dungeon. By the time the marauders reached the dungeon, the prisoners were gone. Terak grabbed Chiral. You help them escape. For that, You'll die! Wait, Terok. I heard them say there's another ship. If you let me fly after them, they'll lead me to it. Tarek slipped Chiral's ring onto her finger, changing her into a raven. 
Then he tied the ring to a cord around his neck. Find the power. Then I'll let you have the ring back. Guided by the raven, Terak's soldiers followed the Ewoks to Noah's star cruiser. Noah placed the power unit in the control panel. They should activate the weapons! The panel sputtered and came to life. The ship's guns roared. Fighting off a band of marauders, Single and the Ewoks ran to the ship. The Ewoks made it inside, but when they looked around, Sindel was gone. Noah and the Ewoks peered out and saw Terek holding her. Old man, I have the child, and you have something of mine. Noah came out clutching the power unit. Harm the girl and you'll get nothing. Release her and I'll fight you for the power. Terek let Sindel go and she ran to Noah. The Marauder King stepped forward. The power, give it to me. If you want it, you'll have to take it. Noah charged straight at Terek. <laughs> Noah hit Terek with his walking stick, but the King recovered quickly. Swinging his sword in a tremendous arc, Terek broke the stick in two. You're finished, old man. Wicket dug into his pouch, found a rock, and placed it in a sling. He whirled it around his head and sent it flying toward Terek. It struck the ring that hung from Terek's neck, smashing it and driving the pieces deep into his chest. Terek staggered and fell. As Noah and the others stared in amazement, the Marauder King writhed, twitched weakly, and turned to stone. Stunned by the loss of their leader, the marauders fled into the woods. The raven rose into the air and flew away, pawing sadly. Now it could never change back. At last, Sindel and Noah could go home. As the Ewoks gathered around the star cruiser, Sindel hugged Wicket. You're my best friend. I'll be back. Noah said goodbye to Teak, then took Sindel's hand. It's time to go. They climbed into the star cruiser. Wicket and Teak stood together and watched as the ship rose through the trees and streaked across the sky.